Welcome to our service of the Word for Trinity Sunday, the official end to the season of Easter, and the one Sunday in the year that most preachers just don't want to do. Just how do you explain the mystery of one God in three persons? Three sides are like the three leaves of the clover leaf, or the three sides of a triangle, or the three states like water, steam and ice, but one element. So it's not surprising that many Christians feel confused about the Trinity. But how about if we see the Trinity as a circle? No beginning or ending, no top or bottom. This is the relationship we are invited to join, so that we pray in God and not to God. An equal and unending relationship, which is summed up in a Celtic prayer I found the other day. Creator, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Star Maker, Storyteller, Breath of Life. The three in one, the one times three, I was never good with numbers. Enough to know you care, you challenge, you make me holy, and you circle me with love. So welcome, in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you all, and also with you. And we pray, eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. Our epistle reading comes from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians and has some very familiar words in it. It's read this morning by Jerry. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first song this morning, Praise with Joy the World's Creator, has a verse for each person of the Trinity plus a final verse calling us as Christians to embody the oneness and diversity demonstrated by God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Praise with joy the world's creator. i 
we come now to our time of confession and saying sorry to God for the things we have got wrong or failed to do. Let us pray. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we say the absolution together. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. We now hear our Gospel reading for today coming from the Gospel of Matthew and read by Jane. Helena will then give us her reflection on the Trinity, which will be followed by a hymn played by Frida. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given on me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, as Peter has mentioned, is Trinity Sunday, and we celebrate God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three and yet one, three in community being together as one, a circle of loving relationship. Peter has shared some images of the Trinity with us, and here is another one. If you were able to ask primary school children in the benefice, what is Trinity?, I think the answer would come with a smile. A Jaffa cake. Why a Jaffa cake? Well, it is an image of three in one. Chocolate, cake and jelly making one Jaffa cake. And the parts are inseparable too, as the sticky fingers and lips of children trying to eat just one part witness too. These are our images that go some way to opening our minds to the Trinity. They help us, but can only ever be incomplete. Trinity is a mystery, far beyond our ability to articulate or fully appreciate. But we are not to get weighed down by our lack of understanding, rather to be encouraged. For Trinity is a mystery, to celebrate to enjoy and to cherish. It is a relationship that we can become part of and is a relationship of love that we should reflect. Or by coming to us as the Son, Jesus reveals to us the Father and sends to us the Spirit. And he shows us also that God is three in one, a communion of love who comes to make his home with us. So let us enjoy and savour the unending loving relationship, the dance and the circle of the Trinity that is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The word Trinity, three in unity, was first coined by Tertullian some 200 years after Christ. Since then the doctrine of the Trinity has expanded Perhaps not a topic for today, but for some other time. For today, in our two readings, we hear of God as Trinity. 
both readings coming at the end of their books, offer encouragement. Matthew recalls the disciples seeing Jesus, their friend and teacher, for the last time on earth. They receive not only Jesus' great commission, but also hear those words of Jesus being with them always. Jesus encourages his disciples to go out to all nations and baptise. They might have thought about all nations being the adjacent countries, but perhaps today with borders more fluid, we can think about nations of people, for all people are important to God. And our command is to go and baptise all people, in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are charged with telling of the love of God through the Father as our Creator, the Son as our Redeemer and Saviour, and the Holy Spirit as our life-giver and sustainer. We are to welcome all into God's family, and our encouragement is that Jesus is with us all the time as we venture outwards. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, gives them strength and encouragement too at the end of his letter through Trinitarian words of blessing. These are well-known words and I wonder how many of us were surprised to discover that the familiar words of the grace could be found in the Bible. We often say the grace at the end of a gathering. We finish meetings sometimes with bowed heads and thinking of home and then saying the grace. Do we really dwell on the words, I wonder? We begin with the words, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which reminds us that our Christian life begins with grace. The grace of God, who in his great mercy reaches out to us with huge generosity and love. A love that led to Jesus, his son, coming amongst us in poverty and humility, to come for us, to die and to rise again for us. Jesus embodies the gift of God's grace, a grace that is a gift to be with God forever, a gift we just need to receive. Then the love of God reminds us of the unconditional love of God the Father for all of his creation and his recreation seen around us in people and in the beauty of the world. A love too that is so great that all things are put right through Christ. A love we are to reflect and to grow in as many witness to today and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that draws and binds us together, the Holy Spirit that is present with God, the Father and God the Son in communion. It is a community that we are invited to be part of, a community that grows together and builds up a common life, drawing us to work together for God, whatever the challenges are. So as we hold in our hearts the people around us, in our home, next door, in our communities or throughout the world, let us lift our hearts in love and look round in fellowship as we say these great words of grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen.
As we celebrate the Trinity today, we come to declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now share the peace together, unfortunately, virtually again. As we think of all those people we would normally meet in church and share the peace with. I want you to think of the circle I mentioned at the beginning of the, ser of the service. If you've still got your strings of thread, maybe you could make them into a circle. Or touch your ring finger and think of all of us together within that circle, surrounded by God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Peace to you from God who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit who gives us life. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We come now to our prayers, led by Viv. O God, one God, three in one God, the mystery of the Trinity, we come to you, not understanding, but trusting, not knowing, but believing. And so in faith we bring to you our prayers for your world, your people, ourselves. Holy Father, you have created all things and made us in your own image. We rejoice in the beauty of your creation and we give thanks for the sunshine and the rain that refreshes the earth. And yet we are saddened and pray for places where your earth is exploited or marred, where the natural order is disturbed, where cyclones and landslides, droughts or storms have caused havoc to our precious planet. During the coronavirus pandemic, the air quality has improved. May we learn from this and treat your creation with respect and care. Holy Father, hear our prayer. As the D-Day landings at this time remind us again of the fragility of peace, we pray for the many countries where there is no peace. And we think of the recent unrest in America and the Black Lives Matter campaign that has highlighted the divisions that still exist between peoples of different backgrounds and cultures. Father, we long and pray for peace between your children, for all people to be respected and loved with the one true Father's love, your love. Holy Father, hear our prayer. Christ in glory, risen and ascended, you have redeemed us by your love and given us life which is eternal. We thank you for living and dying for us, for sharing our human experience, for showing us the way of love and service. We pray for those who do not know you, for those who need you, for those who have lost you. At this time of turmoil in your world, we earnestly pray for your loving grace to reach those in need and your healing power to touch those who are unwell with coronavirus and any other illness. 
Lord Jesus, come upon those in our churches who we have promised to pray for, and for all those we each know and care about. We pray for our young people, for those who have started back in school and those still at home, for older children anxious about their futures at college, university or jobs. Be with them all as they find their way through this time of their lives. Give them patience and purpose, we earnestly pray. Holy Son of God, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, breathing life into all, our advocates and comforter, we thank you for making Jesus known to us and for living his life within us. We pray that we and all your church may reach out in love. Equip us for service. We pray for bishops and clergy, in particular giving thanks for the work and witness of Archbishop Sentamu in York as he retires, and remembering those who would be ordained this summer. May they know your direction for their future ministries. Inspire with the wisdom of God those who lead our country, particularly through these dark days of unrest. May they make clear, safe decisions that will be for the good of us all. Gentle Spirit, come to all who are sad and grieving. May they know your peace and comfort. We name before God those we know. And we also remember the McCann family. Holy Spirit of God, hear our prayer. And we pause to offer to God any particular concerns of our own. O God, beyond us, give us faith. O Christ, beside us, give us peace. O Spirit within us, give us life. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Trinity of love and power, accept and make holy all that we are, all that we have, all that we offer you, in the name of our one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we pray the special prayer for today, the Collet for Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we join all our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. In our final song, we sing that we are heirs of God Almighty, that we have Christ at work within us, and that we have the Spirit without measure. <laughs> Accepted, clothed in right. 
As our worship draws to its close, we reflect the Trinity in our closing prayer and blessing. O God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom, and move between us with love. May we so participate in your dance of Trinity that our lives may resonate with you now and forever. And the blessing. The Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness, and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. The Son, who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love and pray for, this day and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>